Today I'll teach you how to perform client side validation for radio button in ASP.NET Core Razor Pages. So let's start. So the very first thing I'll open Solution Explorer and from there I'll be opening the model class. Now inside the class I am adding a namespace called system.componentmodel.data annotations. This particular namespace is required for data annotations. Here I'll be adding one single property called gender, which will be a string property. As you can see, at present I'm adding a data annotation required and I'm setting the error message for it. This particular data annotation is used for performing required validations. It is very similar to required field validator. So with this, our model class is complete. Now let's move to the index model class. So here I am creating a public property. Whatever properties you create here can be inherited inside the razor page. That means if I create a property as person here, I can easily use it in my razor page. This is quite again similar to the web forms where in our code behind class, if you create a protected or a public property, we can access it in our ASPX page. Now let's move to the razor page. First, I'll inherit the tag helper classes of the ASP.NET Core. The next thing I am doing is adding a form. The method attribute I am setting to post. Now, inside the form, I am creating an HTML table. And within the HTML table, the very first thing which I am adding is a label element for displaying the label for our radio button. The next thing I am adding is a radio button and for that I am making use of input element. Now I am making use of ASP4 attribute and in the ASP4 attribute value, I will be setting the gender property and the value I am setting as M. ASP4 attribute is used to set a value for a particular field. So in this case, it will be fetching the value from the gender field. In similar way, for the second option, I am setting the value as F. The next thing I am adding is the HTML span element, which will be used to display the validation error message. The HTML span has been set with an ASP validation for attribute. This particular attribute will be used for displaying the validation message for the model property. Now I am adding a submit button. And for that, I am making use of input element and I am setting the type as submit. Now I am making use of ASP page handler attribute and I am setting its value as submit. And this particular attribute is used for specifying the handler method. Now let's move to the index model class. Now here I'll be adding another handler method on post submit. Here on post prefix is required before the method name and it is not required to specify in the razor page inside the ASP page handler attribute. But here you need to specify the prefix as on post. Now again, let's move back to the razor page. In order to enable client side validations, I am inheriting some script files, which includes the jQuery library, the jQuery validation plugin and the jQuery validation unobstressive JavaScript library. Here I have pasted some CSS classes. This is required for styling the view as well as setting the color for the error message, which will be displayed during validation. So with this, we complete our programming part and now it's time to run our project and see it in action. Radio button and the button has been rendered and also the validation is working fine. I am selecting the gender and I will again submit. As you can see, the form values have been submitted. It is working fine. So with this, we come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon. Goodbye.